Konnichiwa, amazing people. Hey, it's me. It's the Sexty Cat. I'm here to show you some cool game stuff. You want to see some indie game things? Well, this is my game so far. Called Luna Core, 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 Core. Only one core. So this is it. This is it. This is all. This is all. That's it. Well, this is the current online one, and I have a, a pen, another one I'm working on right now. Another map, that is. And uh, so as you can see, you start off as a cat. Although in the full game, you'll be other animals too. But right now, this is what we got. So we work, we work with what we, well, what we got, okay? So we got a little bit of animation, just a, just a tinge, some jumping. And let's look at more of the world. Ooh, wow. So right now, it has it's technically a fully functional I.O. game. Because you can play it online, you can get points, and there's leaderboards. And you, if there's other players on, you can play along with them. And fight them and kill them. You have these cool little slash attack if you have the sword. And, you know, there's these other weapons, like you have a bow. Or the bu bombs Not bu bombs because that's Nintendo trademark. These are cooler bombs. They got a pink little swirl kind of thing going on in them. Yeah, it's been fun to design this world, and right now these are just ran this is just a randomly generated level. Um, okay, I'm gonna drop the bomb. Oh, wow! No! I almost got hit. That was a close one. Good thing we survived that explosion. So you can collect stars and cost stars to mana. That is. You collect star shards to gain mana, which is kind of your number up in the corner there. So this is the current version that's online that people have been testing out. Um, let's look at another version. So this is the one with the new map that I'm working on. So, this is what I got so far. Well, there's a little bit more that I have to still upload. This is basically just a, just a drop. Just one big image just in the background right now. So I gotta add things that are gonna make layers, a little bit of small animations, stuff like that. So you start in a cozy little house with a little little table. You get a fire. You know, I naturally animate that fire. Nice little porch to take dives from I wasn't supposed to land on the earth, I was supposed to land in Zivota. Ooh, underwater, wow. Ooh, ow. Oh. So I've been slowly adding these these polygons, which I have to enter in manually, which I have to do a bunch of math to figure out where to put them. So I make them an Illustrator, Adobe Illustrator, and then I look at each point by clicking on them. It's just, I want to I wanna show how tedious this process is, which I've tried to make better. I've tried to make like an in-game point finder where I could click on a point and see where that is but um, it's hard to get precisely since I have like a zoom going on it's it's more difficult than you might expect so I take the point the X and Y and then I multiply it by four because that's the multiplier between this image and how it renders in game and so I had to do I had to calculate each point and then multiply it and then enter it in manually I don't know. I, I relish in the tedium of this, which is kind of funny. Uh, like box. Poly? Where am I going to find that? I think over here. Yeah, so I have to enter in manually all these, all the polygon points. Which I've gotten more efficient at. So I, I have this like other layer that I'm working on right now. So this would be like over if you're away from that's what you would see so it looks more like a mountainside and then when you get close enough you can see inside the caves so I think that would be kind of cool uh, I'm also gonna do that for the house and outside for the house the trees have that outer layer too and then the bushes will have this f um, forward layer although the bushes you won't be able to even if you're uh, right by it, you won't be able to see inside but the trees you will be able to and the tower same thing um so I kind of want to... Here, I'll just show the rest of this map. 
So it was kind of fun, like a cozy, nice little place. It's nice to cool out this water. The current functioning of the water, but it's very simple right now. All it is if, is if your character's under a certain Y, he'll go he'll go up. He'll change his gravity to uh, I think the inverse times 0.4. So this is like an open field over here too. And then if you go too far, you'll just re-render here. But this is just water over here. It's not fully. Got to enter that polygon in, you see? Let's see how far I could fall and try to get as deep into the water as I can. Because I haven't tested this out yet. Because I want to be able to get low enough. Well, so soon enough, I'm going to have clouds coming from the chimney. And they'll keep getting you up higher, 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 higher. So you can use those as platforms to get really far up. But let's see if I can get into the water. Deep into the water. Whee! Whoa, pretty deep. Not quite deep enough. <sighs> okay, deep underwater. You can, technically, you can squeeze down really low. But I had to figure out a way <laughs> to deal with that. Um, and I don't know, I might change how this works on here. Some other worlds that I want to make are spooky woods with spiky porcupines, scary grackle birds, and... and the Wood Witch, or whatever her name is going to be. So these are the, those will be the mobs in that area. I'm thinking this is like the home area, and that it's more peaceful. I was even thinking inside the house, maybe you can't even uh, attack each other. I was also thinking it would be really cool if you could serve tea. I just want to... <laughs> just things to be nice with. I've noticed a lot of times us playing, we don't fight each other in the game, which is what you would expect to do. But that's kind of how Earth IO was too, where you could technically kill each other, but instead you're just hanging out and stuff. So I kind of want to give options for both. Give options to kill if you want to kill, or if you want to chill and just hang out, give you little cute fun things to do. And then exploration options. There's so much potential. So, so yeah, I might have this land up here, maybe a hot air balloon. But right now I'm thinking about spooky woods. The, the ice area, ice mountain, so high up, and with some ice caves with that as well. And then the, the fiery caves, or it could be like a volcano or something, I don't know. So I think that would be cool, little themed areas. And then maybe the sky would be an area too. So this is just more future ideas. Sooner things that I probably need to work on are like the hitboxes, the other attacks that your character has. So right now they only have this short, short slash which I should animate the character moving to. Um, but I kind of want to make this shorter range. Then you use E and Q key to do like a, a swing slash. It'd be a broader stroke. It might take longer to do, but uh, it spreads over an area. An up slash and a down slash. And so, like very simple animations would be helpful for those, as well as... Um, I had to re-engineer how the hitboxes work because they don't work really well right now. I mean, they could do better. Um, I could explain the details why, but I'm just going to skip that. So a few more attacks. One have the bow functioning. And again, use WASD, W-A-S-D, and the Q and E key to shoot in those directions. So you can shoot diagonals, left, right, and up, and down. And I would have it where you hold down the key charges of the bow a little bit more and then the, the arrow is going to have a trajectory like velocity and it'll fall down and I was even thinking you, I want to make it where you could slash slash the arrow and reflect it back at the person and have it hurt that would be pretty cool and it gives it kind of like a drawback and a counter so you want to in games that are especially multiplayer you want a fair competitive game you need options you need ton more options the better honestly it's it really sucks in these games when when a character's best move is just like a single attack and they have to spam an attack. That's like the that's like the worst. The worst is also having one character that's OP better than everybody. It's one reason why I've divorced appearance from mechanics, essentially. I kinda want appearance So like in like Super Smash Brothers, you have different characters. They all have different ranges of abilities. And they all have pros and cons, they have strengths and weaknesses. And so like, if I want to play Jigglypuff all the time, even if, even if I just like her aesthetically, 
I have to deal with her moveset and the mechanics of how she works. So I feel like if I divorce those, you also remove the balance whining from people. From people being like, oh, this character is OP, this character sucks. And that you just literally, that whole issue you just resolve. Instead of having to balance things between different types. It also makes the balancing process so much easier. Because if everybody has the same options, then it's balanced. So those are kind of the reasons why I've chosen these kind of design routes. And honestly, it's just ideas that I've had and I've I've thought about for a long time and I'm just, I'm just going to attempt them. I'm just going to stick to it and, and see how it works out. And I can always change it in the future. But I think they're pretty sound. So I kind of wanted to go over just a couple of the just broad strokes over how the code works. So in a multiplayer game, it's going to be more complex in a way than just a single player game, which is what I mostly have been been making lately before this game this is my first kind of multiplayer project so one of the big big things is that there's a whole nother layer you're dealing with is a server a server layer so the server has to give data to all the clients and the clients have to send data to the server and you got to deal with all that so basically like in my game some of the client stuff are the input so this is the, the input code and the render code so those are the two one the two pages I, I mess with the most um, I can show you the folder I'm just gonna show you little bits in that so kind of a broad thing about video games usually they uh, there's a render there's a an update function so that's something that's running generally about 60 times a second it's just a set of code that's constantly constantly going 60 times a second 60 times a second super fast so usually you do your rendering every frame every time every time you're doing that so that's usually 60 times a second it doesn't have to be it could be like 30 it depends on your television certain televisions have different refresh rates so certain video games had like 59 point something for their how many frames per second and basically there's a way that we do it so if this computer lags it'll adjust everything so that things are still still in sync so here's the render. So that's the there in the render function. That's what's going to be called 60 times a second. So in here, based upon how you order things, things will be rendered layered on top of each other inside this render function. First is getting the size of your canvas, which will change if you if you adjust your window. So this has a lot to do with the beginning math that you need to calculate for the graphics. I'm always impressed that these games are calculating so much stuff you're basically calculating all this math 60 times a second and that's what I'm gonna show you in this one bl uh, function block all the stuff that happens so it saves so it clears it clears the canvas so this is what I'm talking about 60 times it's clearing the entire canvas it has no, no reference to the old canvas save I probably don't have to save there translate so this is just putting in the middle of the screen and then I scale it to whatever your zoom is right now. And then this is the really the background stuff. Making some stars, clouds, moons. So those are in the very, very back. So we render them first. And then next, this is just the, the blank image I have for the very back for the background. Um so the real the real guts of rendering an image is right here just this line context which is your canvas your 2d rendering context under window um, and they have a function in JavaScript that's just draw image it's great and it needs it requires at least an image file which is this uh, an X and Y and then that's that's all required parameters you could also send it how wide and how high you want to draw it so these are the background things and then these um this is going through each object that's close enough to the player and then rendering those objects so basically anything that's not a player is an object right now in the game and i think it's going to be that way then here's the others so this is just a, a, an array of all the other players and this is you so i'll render you on top and i'm going to adjust this soon because i need to have things on top of each other so i gotta invent a an ordering a sorting mechanism and it'll be a Z 
layer, kind of like X. X is left and right, Y is up and down, and Z is back and forward. Even though it's a 2D game, you can still say it's a Z. So a higher Z would be closer to you, and a lower Z would be behind you. So you, I would start giving all these objects Z qualities. So like this, this thing would have a higher Z and be rendered. And so when this, when you go into the render function, it would sort it out for the higher Z's to render first. So it's drawn on top. And then here's all your text stuff. So chats, leaderboard. So that's that's a client side. That's a that's an example of the client side. I guess another one. You can show you the input. The input's pretty simple. It's it's going to create a, a, an object to hold all the variables. So you can send this six, 60 times to the server. So this is what you're sending from the player. Um, I even have some old variables. I don't need buy. I could just take that off right now. So now, now it's going to send less data to the server. We're just slightly going to inc increase the speed. Ever so slightly. So you have stuff. So this is what... This is basically just control, like the control stuff, but also I sometimes name it a little bit something different. Like if it has text to send, like a chat, it'll be it'll be full of something. It'll be full of a text, and once it's sent, then I'll have the server delete that from this. Um. So basically, this is this is the most important part. When you have a key, your keyboard key down, it'll send an event. It'll send this to this function. And then we filter it out. If if it's the left arrow, then do this. If it's the right arrow, do this. And all we do is basically change this object, such like left, to true. So if the key is down, then that key is true. And then send that to the server. Or it's gonna it's gonna package this package this all in one object, and then every 60 times a second send it to the server. And then you have to check when the key is actually up to change the variable to false. So when you press the key, when you press press the key down and it's pressed down, that's keyboard down and then up is like that. So you actually have to write that out. I right, some stuff for the mouse, which was just to test the, the point stuff. Okay. Now let's go into the, the guts of the server stuff. So basically, all you're doing on the client side, on the player side is just a few things you're just rendering the graphics which you're receiving which ones you should render and then you're sending your inputs to the server so you're basically you're just you're not that much involved in the game you're just sending and receiving just a little bit of data the server is really doing all the calculation all it, it'll send you which objects you can render and if it's not within its its little box it gives the player then the player can't render it it can't receive that info in any way so that's that's like if you think like somebody hacking, they can't really hack. Some games, which I know, I know Earth.io is definitely it gives the, each player a lot of data, so you can use that data. So I have to manually enter the leaderboard in. So that's the that's what it is right now. So basically, you have uh, you have all this code right here. Is what it, when the server starts, it does all this stuff. So creates some variables, sets up the leaderboard here. This is the physics. So there, there's a whole engine I use called p2.js. It's a really great physics engine. It's got a lot of examples. You can look that up. Um, so this is on the physics world. On every time it calculates something, then do all this stuff. So we do stuff like um, a lot of this is out. But if you need to add a collectible, something if there's a physics body to remove, you want to do that in the post step. So it's not calculating something when it's removing the physics body. Yeah, I guess there's not that much in here. When there's a each time there's a contact, that's when this function gets triggered. So anytime two physics bodies hit each other, it's gonna run through this. And then so what we do is we check each body, check A for this quality, check B for this quality, and this, and then if all these things work out then do this so this is a lot of important code happens here so like right here this is like exp if an explosion hits a block then destroy the block and make a new block that's what this is saying 
Um, if, in a hitbox, this is a, if a hitbox is covering a player, then make them hurt. Um, this is if there's moon collectibles. So if one's a player, the other one's a collectible, then kill the collectible and give the player points. Uh, this is yeah another collectible. Okay, so that's all the those, and then we get to more ini initializer stuff. We make all these physics bodies. So this is all happening still in the beginning of the of the of the server. We just set up some of these functions in there. Um, and there's so there's other functions that do stuff. Detonate a bomb. Those will run every time you need to blow up a bomb. So then it creates an explosion, which is its own physics body. Because the best way in this set of engines to calculate the hitbox. And that's why I'm going to have to change the hitboxes to, to the physics bodies. Rather, I was just using a variable that had the x, y, width, and height of a box. Um, but the phys this physics engine can do it at a faster pace if you make it a physics body. Add collectible. These are the custom intros for people. When you need to remove a player, do this stuff, which it resorts to the leaderboard. Update a different time. So this is an update function. So it runs this every frame. And in the update, do stuff with the chat, make the world go forward. For each object, check a bunch of stuff. If they've collected things, add the points. Um, if if your your player X is over two th twenty thousand, then bring them back home. So they're too far left, too far right. So yeah, here's just a bunch of random code stuff. I figured I'd show. It's it's a lot of fun and a lot of work, but hopefully I can finish this game or at least get it to further along and make something really cool people can enjoy and then I can enjoy too. All right, guys, we'll catch you around next time. Be meowsome, stay meowsome.